Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 128. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, and welcome to another episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you have decided to tune in today because many of you out there, you are wondering how on earth can you build more cash flow? What are the skill sets that I need and what is it going to take to really make this thing happen? Many times you, you, you've thought to yourself, man, I know there's more for me out there. I know that I am capable of more. I know that with the right skill set and team and, and execution plan. I could do this real estate thing. I could build this business thing. I can go create some cash flow for myself and my family. And here's the thing. You are absolutely right. But have you heard the phrase, as a man thinketh, so is he? Did you realize that a lot of what you're thinking could be the very reason you have yet to make it to where you're trying to go? Well, that's why we're going to talk today with Tony Newmeyer, who will help you with this. He is currently the author of The Seven Minute Millionaire, How to Think Yourself Rich, love that already, and the founder of The Millionaire Academy. You gotta understand, Tony's done real estate, he's done business, he's done a lot of things. And one of the interesting things that I found interesting about him is that in a single day, he was able to earn $600,000. And if you are wondering how many zeros that is, it's enough. Does that make sense? In a single day. Now, you don't do that by maintaining the level of thinking that you currently have. So I'm guessing that because he's been able to speak on the stage with individuals like Mark Victor Hansen, has been aide to uh, George Bush Sr., Doug Weed, as well as Bob Proctor and others, I'm guessing that today you and I are going to learn a whole bunch. So please help me welcome Mr. Tony Newmeyer. Tony, are you there? I am, Jay. Thanks. Appreciate that uh, warm intro. You're welcome. Doing the best that I can. Glad that you are here. Now, what I tend to do is I, I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs. I, maybe I have a fireman complex. I like rescuing people. I don't know. But I look at today's entrepreneurs as a bunch of superheroes. You know, like yesterday's superheroes, like Batman, Robin, you know, Wonder Woman, Aquaman. Some people still call him a superhero. My question, though, is all around the origin because every superhero before they put on their tights and you know could freeze things in place they they started out as a quote-unquote normal human being then something happened to them and this transformation occurred and now they go around and save people in various different ways i think those are today's entrepreneurs my question to you is before you were the superhero you are today what was your alter ego your previous identity that that real Tony underneath it all? Well, let me put it this way. It was less than Clark Kent. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it, it, it worked out well for him, but okay, I got you. I got you. So yeah, yeah. Well, let, let me let me start very quickly with sort of the, the humble beginnings, if you will. Uh, when I was born, when my mother was 16 years old, and uh, by the time she was 20, uh, she was on her own with me and my two brothers. My dad had left, and we had uh, no money to speak of, uh, literally. In fact, uh, one winter after the uh, power had been turned off and we had no heat, my mom actually was burning the uh, living room furniture in the fireplace to keep us warm. So, uh, you know, to say that I come from humble beginnings uh, is probably a bit of an understatement. But that said, my mother was determined and she gave me uh, great uh, advice in the sense that she constantly said that we could be, or myself and my brothers could be anything we wanted to be. 
And so from that beginning, at least I, I had something very positive uh, coming from behind uh, in terms of my support from my mom. And then later in life, uh, actually started selling real estate, got into uh, the development of real estate, uh, renovating and flipping homes, and uh, ended up having uh, through a real estate, going through a real estate crash that uh, was extremely devastating, both emotionally and financially to me, to the point where I cr uh, had to declare a complete bankruptcy. I was dead broke. Um, in fact, I had no income. I, I really was in a point uh, in my early 20s where I, I didn't know where to turn. And uh, it was a real low point for me. I, I had prior to that uh, done some reading in the area of personal development. I knew it was possible or thought it was possible and I thought it was on the road. But then um, because my mom had uh, the background of, of financial collection agencies, she'd always told us, stay out of debt. Don't get into debt. And what my mistake was, was becoming completely over leveraged. And uh, really when the when the crash hit, I had nowhere to turn. Um, I, I owed actually about $3 million during the peak of this whole thing. Uh, and in my early 20s, I don't know why the banks lent me all this money, but they did. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, then after everything was sold, um, uh, I owed about a million and a half dollars with no income, like I say. And so if, uh, there was a time when I found it difficult to feed myself. Um, and uh, I was really emotionally uh, spent. And, and then... Uh, you know, as time went along, it took me um, a few years to really get my head back on straight so that I could start to um, really, I guess, uh, start moving forward again uh, because I was really in a funk. And, uh, you know, got a couple of jobs and uh, got back into real estate a few years later, got back into selling real estate. And uh, that's when in the early 90s I discovered the secret that I write about in my book, the seven minute secret that really changed my life. And in that year uh, that I started working with a mastermind group, working with some people together, uh, I ended up doubling my real estate sales in a single year and, and creating a, a multi-million dollar uh, business that had a massive cash flow for me. And after my first year, it was about 20,000 a month. And after about two years, it was close to 50,000 a month. And so between that and my real estate career, uh, and you talk about cash flow, I mean, it is critical. Cash flow is king in my mind, and it gave me the opportunity to build other things and build other assets. And so uh, that's sort of the, I guess, long and short of my before you call it superhero, which I don't consider myself a superhero, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, understood, understood. I just think all entrepreneurs are superheroes because we're the ones that go out there and we take on other people's problems. You know, what else It what else do superheroes do? You know, if I'm falling from a burning building, I really want Superman to take on that problem and come and pick me up. I mean, that would be great if he would do that. We take on the problems of other people and we present them with a solution that they can choose to take advantage of or not and you've done that and that's that's what i mean by being the superhero now if i happen to see you the next time i see you with a cape and some tights it's okay i understand that you've just embraced this concept of being that superhero at the end of the day and that's completely fine by me i'll keep that in mind <laughs> now as you you said something that that kind of struck a chord with me. Uh, you you said you were dead broke, and many people they they know you know my story and how my wife couldn't eat or drink, and we were I was unable to walk or talk, and we were squatting a bank owned property, all of that thing. My question to you has to do with during that time though, y you may be dead broke, but you're not dead, and. I think during that time, that's when that formation of the what it is that you're really going to become begins. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and I said that uh, I was really emotionally spent and, and I meant that. It, it really, my mind was so twisted. I, I, I really questioned my own self-worth at that point, at, that, at the lowest point, because you know, I, I was in the real estate business and I had this devastating uh, real estate uh, scenario take place and I owed all of this money, which is something I, I didn't feel that uh, I, I really didn't didn't feel good to me. It wasn't in my mantra to uh, end up not paying bills. And so that was, a, that was a big deal for me. But that said, 
uh, I also did know in the back of my mind that, you know, there is something better. And it it took a decision, really. And I, I did start to get back out of that funk once I made that initial decision to do so. And once I got back into real estate, I got around some positive people. I got around some some good uh, uh, positive influences as well. And uh, that really helped uh, start me down that direction of getting ahead again. And then it was, it was when my uh, son was born that I really made the decision and a, and a real decision that, okay, I need to do better. I, I, I'm doing okay right now. I'm, I'm making ends meet, you know, selling real estate and so on. But it was really time to get my dreams back and get back on the track of fulfilling what I really wanted to fulfill previous in previous years. And that's what I made the decision and um, discovered, uh, the, you know, the seven minute secret, if you will, and the, the PPMs creating personal programming messages and that whole aspect. So, yes, I mean, that, that's that's how that all came about. So it wasn't dead. It was just buried quite deeply at that time. And, you know, Tony, that's exactly what I wanted you to say right there. You were talking about the how it all comes to be. It's not like you just wake up one day and go, oh, everything's going to be better. It, it take There is a process to that recovery. There's a process of men, uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, all of them that we all must go through or choose to go through because other people choose to avoid it. Now, I've got a question for you, though, because you've said two different instances. You, you had a supportive mom, and then you said later, after the, we'll call it the crash, you you had this environment of individuals that you were getting around that were positive. And I'm curious, from your viewpoint, how important is that support structure or those the people that you hang around with? Well, I think it's very important. Uh, you know, we can have friends and acquaintances that maybe are not part of our success uh, team or success fulfillment track. And that's okay. But you want to be really careful about who you hang around with and who you allow to influence you because they can really drag you down. And what happens is that if you start making statements to people that uh, friends, family, sometimes uh, people that don't know you even will try and bring you down to their level and keep you down just because they're afraid that you're going to leave the community you're going to leave the the fold uh, with them if you will mm. and so they they have a and sometimes it's not necessarily malicious it's really a subconscious reaction by the, uh, on their part to hold you back and so i think it is extremely important uh, of who you hang around with and who you associate with particularly when you're talking about the achievement that you want to uh, have in your life if you are wanting to be a peak performer would you rather Play. Let's just use the game of tennis for example. If you're going to peak perform, be a peak performer in tennis, do you want to play somebody that is worse than you or somebody that is better than you? You're going to get better by playing somebody that's better than you, and it's the same thing in life. You know, hang around people that are going to uh, be able to give you a bit of a road to run on, a track to run on, and I think that's really important and really uh, valuable for people to understand. Yeah, ab- absolutely agreed. In fact, I don't want someone that's better than me. I want someone that is multiples <laughs> better <laughs> because uh, I I want to really, really catch up quickly. And I find that the more I put myself in those environments with individuals who are multiples better, the faster uh, I grow, not just growing, but growing as quickly as humanly possible. The other thing that you said that I don't know if anyone caught, but I heard it. You said I made a real decision. Now, many times we think we, we've we made a decision, but you've made a distinction of real decision. I want to know what you mean. Action. Single word. Uh, you know, a decision is about the action that you take. And, you know, we can we can fool ourselves that we've made decisions, but until you really take action, and by taking action, that also means having a plan. Because you really need to have a, an absolute plan of what it is that you are going to uh, be doing, the tasks you require to attain what it is you want to attain. And and this is what I go through in my book, actually, in in great detail. I talk about how you break things down, how how you come up with that plan, and 
and if you don't know exactly how you're going to accomplish the uh, cash flow uh, that you're talking about, then that I think is so critical, and how you don't, um, or if you don't know exactly how you're going to ac- accomplish uh, the particular goals you're setting out, I've got methods in my book exactly how you do that in terms of brainstorming with yourself on a regular basis so you can create ideas to set that plan into motion. And so it really comes down to having a plan, but really that decision doesn't take place until you take the action. Agreed. Agreed. And agreed. Now, I have a question. Why, after all of the things that you have done, take the time to even write Seven Minute Millionaire? Well, you know, I've actually had this book in my head for a number of years, and it's just been something um, that I really think needed to be talked about because there are, there are a lot of self-development uh, people out there and books, and, and they're all good, and they're all worth reading, and I think everybody should read uh, a, a large number of them. That said, what I think a lot of them are just missing is there's one small ingredient, and that is about uh, actually influencing the, the subconscious mind aligning it with the conscious mind because what happens is people think that uh, they about the goals they want to achieve and yet they allow themselves to be programmed of what they're going to achieve by the outside world and even if you write out your goals and even if you have them um, specific and if you have a time set on them unless you align the subconscious so that it also wants to create what you have set out you're going to have a more difficult time doing it. I'm not saying it's impossible. That said, if you want to fast track it, you can really uh, do this by using this technique of uh, personal programming messages that I talk about. And so you ask me why. And the reason is, is because I really wanted to help people uh, understand how they can have the success that they really truly want desire and deserve because I think everybody deserves to be successful as successful as they want to be whatever that means to them and uh, yet I think I, and I see it all the time people striving and, and and floundering not quite knowing exactly how to get there and I've had some great success and I just want to give back and and help other people have great success also got it makes perfect sense to me but help us understand personal programming message. Now, in my world, when you say PPM, I'm thinking something completely different, that's for sure, than a a personal programming message. Could you help us understand a little bit more what those are? Sure. Uh, A personal programming message is the message that you feed yourself uh, on a daily basis that is going to program your subconscious mind so that you have power habits of success. And so what We all have habits and, uh, you know, some people have negative habits like smoking. Other people have positive habits like going to the gym. If you've ever smoked and tried to stop smoking or if you've ever had the positive habit of uh, of going to the gym and I've experienced this, I haven't been a smoker, but I've experienced this going to the gym and and I go, you know, four or five times a week. But if I all of a sudden go on holiday or I go somehow I get into a, a situation where I don't go for two or three or four weeks. All of a sudden, my it's almost like I'm going through withdrawals. And the reason for that is because I've created this habit. Now, we can create habits in all areas of our lives. And so a success habit or a power success habit is, is programmable. And we can do that. And in, in, in about 30 days, and you know, you can, they say that it takes about 21 days to set a habit in place. And that, that's true depending on how entrenched some of your other habits are that you're replacing. <laughs> how entrenched, I like how you said that. Because yeah, um, I can think of a habit or two that are probably very, very deeply entrenched. Now, on this, on this topic, one of the things that I, I think about it, because I know for myself, that transformation from not an investor, not a real estate guy to a real estate guy <laughs> was completely different. A whole new set of everything. I mean, there's like nothing that could be the same. I, all the old stuff had to go away in order to become this particular person. So w- how does one do that? And, e- and 30 days would be great if, if we could accomplish it. What What's that process look like? 
Well, let me just say that, uh, first off, the 30 days isn't going to make you the success that you're after. The 30 days of, is the ability, it gives you the chance to set yourself on the road to that freedom. Uh, but let me just say, uh, explain what that actually looks like. So if we take our uh, big picture goals, and, and they could be uh, five years, let's just say, uh, for most people, um, and then we break them down into a three-year, a two-year, a one-year and then we break that down into tasks and we then break that down uh, further so that we break it down into daily tasks that are going to get us to where we want to go. And so what I do is I work with people to program themselves so that these daily tasks become enjoyable. They approach them with enthusiasm and these could be tasks that they didn't like doing or didn't, couldn't <laughs> comprehend doing. I can give you an example uh, for myself. When, when I was selling real estate, uh, I used to get on the phone and uh, from 8.30 in the morning until 10.01, uh, I would make cold calls every single day, five days a week. Uh, that wasn't a particularly enjoyable thing. But that said, when I uh, used my PPMs to program myself that this was something that was positive and actually going to create what my goals for myself, and, and in fact it did, uh, it became something I looked forward to each and every day. 8.30 to 10.01, I would do it every single day. And so by using your, your PPMs, you really start to uh, set yourself on the road to creating habits that are going to draw you toward your goals and actually draw your goals toward you as well. So it actually starts to, you get to a point where you're actually uh, creating and attracting everything that you want in your life. And it isn't just about money. I mean, I'm talking about relationships and fitness uh, goals in all aspects of your life. So we don't just focus on the money uh, when I talk about this in the book. Yeah, well, I think right now you, you just basically said, I can make you going to the gym and, uh, <laughs> and an enjoyable process. And I'm sure there's a number of people who are listening right now going, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, because uh, oftentimes when we're working against ourselves, I, I, that's what it sounds like you're saying. You're saying you can help yes. us get in alignment so that we're not working against ourselves to actually go where we say, keywords say we want to be. And you figured that out. And, and I, I find that very, very intriguing uh, because at the end of the day, there's never this end process to this this human that we are all building in this life where we're becoming in, in various different ways, uh, shapes, and forms. So what was the event that occurred that helped you uncover this information? Are you tired of letting good cash flow generating ideas go to waste? Go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash ready to apply for a complimentary Yes, that means free one-on-one -on -one breakthrough session. Take action now. Go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash ready. Again, that's cashflowdiary.com forward slash ready. Before we get back to today's episode of the Cashflow Diary podcast, your host Jay Massey has some important insights to share with you. Hey guys, have you ever noticed how your history, your past, what you've been through before today has a lot to do with what you do today or how you view today. And one of the things that I'm hoping that you have been able to glean from all of the entrepreneurs that we've talked to is how their past often informs their future. It does not mean that their past equals their future. It just means it informs it. You can use it to give you the information that you need, the necessary corrections, dare I say, to go out there and make success happen. Remember, one of the most important things you and I can learn to do is learn how to fail. Let's get back to it. Well, I first learned of the concept, and they weren't called PPMs, um, from a fellow by the name of Bob Proctor, who I actually had the opportunity to speak on stage with. And uh, this was, like I said, back in the early 90s. And I was selling real estate. After my son was born, I made this decision that, yes, it's got to be done. I'm getting back on track. And we sat down. Uh, there's a few of us at, uh, in this real estate office, and we formed a mastermind group. And we met uh, once a week, each uh, in early in the morning, 
and we would talk about where we were going. We would talk about the concepts that we were all working together to learn, which I've laid out in this book, and uh, and talk about use, using these programming messages. We, they weren't called, as I say, PPMs. But that's when I first learned of the concept. And when I put it into play, it worked remarkably. In fact, it, re- it worked for other people in the group as well. In fact, everybody. And uh, so it was really quite an astonishing uh, revelation for me as I saw the transition for each of the people and the members of this mastermind uh, had, go on to successes that they had never really thought possible and, and certainly hadn't had in, in their previous years of, uh, of business and and um, their personal lives. Interesting. Yeah. That, I mean, the, those catalyst events. What's interesting to me is that it's it seems to be a consistent theme that somehow having kids forces us to finally step into and gives ourselves the excuse to step into the person we should have been all along. Um, I find it interesting that you found your motivation there as well. Was everyone in the group also parents? Do you remember? Uh, they weren't at the time, no. Uh, since then, they are. Uh, that said, they weren't not all at the time. Some of them were single, and it worked just as well whether they were single or married or had children or didn't. So it, it, you don't have to have children for this system to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, because I often, I, I get questions like, hey, Jay, I, I'd like to do this, but I, I don't, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm not homeless, I'm not squatting a bank on property, I can eat and drink, and my kids are fine. How on earth do I, it seems like everyone that I run into, this is what they say to me, they say, it seems like everyone I run into who's ever done anything of, of note had to lose it all or have something bad happen to them. What would you say to that particular person, Tony? Well, it comes down to contentment. And I think that contentment uh, is is a very valuable thing. And at the same time, it can also be a very hazardous thing. It, and it depends on, on your perspective. Now, what I talked with uh, people that I work with on this, on this topic is if you are content with your life currently 100% and, and you're making, it doesn't matter how much, just, you know, you're making a, a decent living, you've got food on the table, you've got a good relationship and, but you don't really strive to get ahead. You're content. That's, that's perfectly acceptable. Everybody doesn't have to strive to be at the levels that we're talking about. That said, if you're not content, and I know I wasn't, and I know a lot of people are not content with where they sit in lives, they actually strive for more, then that's when this content uh, or lack of content uh, creates a spark from within. And you know, we can go to motivational speakers, we can listen to great uh, talks and, and get excited and walk away enthused. But those I don't think are, they're, they're all beneficial because you can always learn something, but you need to be inspired from within. And it really is a burning desire to, to get ahead, to do something different, to constantly learn and achieve a little bit more. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And it's funny, I, I often say, and when you go somewhere, when I go anywhere, no matter what I'm doing, if I'm uh, going to meet a new person or I'm going to a seminar, whether regardless of the cost, if I'm reading a new book, regardless of the cost, my only intent is to get one new idea from that particular event or person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if I can get that, I will consider it worth the investment of time, energy, effort, money, whatever it took to, to make all those things happen. So this kind of leads me to you you mentioned these techniques is what what's inside the the book can you give us a little sneak peek give give us something that we could use today to be able to put ourselves in a more correct alignment than we might be right now okay let me uh talk about what i call the razor's edge reality i think this is something that um is is also under uh, realized in terms of what the what a difference one percent effort can make in a mm-hmm. person's life, and you when I talked earlier, I talked about uh, making cold calls from uh, eight thirty in the morning until ten o one, and ten o one was very important because it used to be ten o'clock. But when I made this decision and got on track with 
this razor's edge uh, theory I learned at the time, and I now call it the reality because uh, I've proven that it works, and I've helped other people prove that it works for them too. And what I was doing is I was making, I used to make cold calls, as I say, from 8.30 to 10. I added in one more minute. I made about 100 calls in that period of time. My calls were very short, very quick, just simply asking people if they were looking to buy or sell real estate in the next six months. Now, in that extra one minute, I was able to produce an extra about 10 calls a week or 500, uh, 500 calls a year. I knew I would about 10% of those people would say that they were interested in buying or selling real estate. So that's 50 people. I wouldn't, not all of them would end up doing something and I wouldn't get, do business with all of them. That's just not realistic. That said though, that uh, little technique actually made me tens of thousands of dollars when it came to uh, my real estate business. Utilizing that same technique in building my business that I was also building at the same time actually made me several million dollars because I actually started getting up a half hour earlier in the day and uh, just working on creating that business. And I worked with people, I was on the West Coast, so I was on Pacific time, and I worked with people in the East Coast time at, at five in the morning. And so I was able to actually uh, create and build an entire business based on half an hour or an hour earlier a day, uh, just a little bit more. And if you look at sports uh, heroes uh, that people think of or just great athletes in general, it isn't great numbers that, uh, in terms of large percentages of difference that makes a superstar versus somebody that tries to, is trying to stay in the league. In fact, it's very, very small percentage points that earns people millions of dollars versus somebody that earns very little. And so I think that razor's edge reality is something that people can uh, take away and start today and really change their life when they understand the power of it and they understand how to utilize it in their own lives. You know, what's really funny about what you just said, and I, I, obviously I didn't have a context for processing uh, this decision at the time, is, uh, you know, a few months ago, I, I ran into a gentleman by the name of Craig Ballantyne, and if you guys want to listen to that episode, it's number 105, at, at, in Lithuania is where we were, and he he just finally convicted me that I needed to be up earlier and all this other stuff because I had gotten, a we'll say, a little lazy. And ever since then, I've been getting up at approximately 4.30, and that time has been, while more than a minute, <laughs> it has definitely produced significant results since I've been able, since I've been up, you know, earlier, so much earlier, you know, kind of like working on East Coast hours, right? Like you were saying, it's just amazing that you just said that to me. It's amazing to me that you just said that because I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm beginning to experience. And by the time it's like, you know, 10 a.m. now, it's like, it feels like the it's late. It's day. I mean, you know, I've, I've put in so much and produced so much by that point. It's, it's just uh, interesting how that one little decision uh, does indeed make a compounded difference in, in a very short period of time if, if we stick with it. Absolutely. And, and you just said something very important, stick with it. And, you know, consistency in all of ch achievement is hugely important. You know, we need to be uh, consistent when we make the decision to do it and we make the decision to program our mind, if, if we're not doing it consistently, it's not going to do you much good. It's like taking vitamins. I'm a, I'm a, I take vitamins and one of my business that I created was a vitamin business. And, uh, you know, if you don't take the vitamins on a consistent basis, they're not going to do you any good. They don't do any good in the bottle. So, <laughs> you know, they're not, you just got to take these things and you got to do it every day. Uh, and just think of it as part of your lifestyle. <laughs> Vitamins. That's like a book that's not opened. Is that what you're saying? This, Absolutely. This, this same, same scenario. Same idea. Same idea. Vitamins in the bottle. That's pretty funny. I like it. So well, how do we... Okay. I, I'm in this space. I'm like, okay, Tony, I believe you. I want to be different. I'm going to be different. Uh, we're we're going to do different stuff. How does one stay in that space? Day two, day 20, day 200. How does one 
develop that character and habit of consistency in these areas, mind you, where we were previously working against ourselves and don't necessarily consider all that fun. Well, I I call it um, exponential living. And uh, the way that we do this is we grow uh, exponentially. And if we if we think of it from the perspective that uh, we are looking at, let's just say, we'll use the Rocky Mountains here as the uh, goal. Um, We're off in the distance. We see this vast, massive set of mountains, and we know that that's where we want to go. But when we get closer, all of a sudden they look really big, and uh, we don't know exactly what to. uh, Maybe we don't know what to do. But when we get up very close, all of a sudden is we can only see one peak and it's not that high. And we start to climb it and we go up that peak and we go up that peak a little bit further. And when we get to the top, to the top of that mountain or the top of that foothill and we reach the peak of it, the summit, we actually then can see the next mountain that we must go over. And so you do the same thing and you repeat. It's like that old saying, you know, rinse and repeat. And uh, just you go up to the bottom, you climb to the top, and when you get to the top of that mountain, you see the next peak. And so, yes, it takes some discipline initially to do your PPMs and create the plan for yourself. And, yes, that's going to require a few days of extra, maybe a little tougher for you when you're first starting out. But as you build this, uh, you called it character, and I think it's a really important uh, word, You build this character and belief in yourself and belief in the process uh, as you start to do it. Because as you reach each summit and as you start to experience the success and the difference in your life, and it happens very quickly through the utilization of this programming method that I'm talking about, you start to really become enthused and inspired by it to the point that you don't want to give it up. I mean, that's really what happens as you just really don't want to give it up and won't give it up. Right. Yeah, and totally understood. Now, I was taught a, a while ago, one of my mentors, he simply said, go as far as you can see. And when you get there, <laughs> you'll see further. And <laughs> I was, I, 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 that's what I was thinking about when you were talking is because at the end of the day, there is no such thing as ever coasting is what you're really saying. Uh, because there, there's always going to be that next uh, what you call it? Summit to to climb next next peak. Um, is is there ever a point at which uh, you you how do you say feel like you've arrived though? Well, not personally. I, you know. Well, let me answer that in two ways. Okay. Uh, one is uh, I think that once you have developed great cash flow and you've developed an asset base that gives you the financial security and freedom that you're after, that is an arrival point. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have uh, stopped or that you're going to stop. Okay, so yes, you've arrived at a point where you're completely comfortable, you're free of uh, worrying about where the food is coming from, maybe you can buy nice things now and so on. But the next level is really, okay, what can I do from here? It goes beyond yourself. And th- this is why I'm writing the book is because, you know, this is beyond myself now. Uh, I can go and do other things and, and sure, I'll, I'll make some income from it, but I'm providing such a valuable service. And I mean, for the cost of the book, it, it, you know, I think it's a, something that will literally change people's lives. Uh, it's, it's a matter of now doing something else. And maybe you continue to do the same thing. Maybe you want to build you know, a massive uh, real estate empire, which is a fabulous uh, thing to do. And maybe you want to pass it on to your family, your children, your grandchildren, your heirs, uh, or maybe you want to give to charity. See, once you get to that point, it then becomes more about other people, uh, serving other people, doing other things, and and really, uh, I think, getting ahead in other ways. Yeah. The funny part is, is that was the that's part of the reason this podcast even exists <laughs> is because I, I I had a it I call it an epiphany, I don't know, where I went on a cruise, came back, and I spent that summer calling myself retired, doing nothing, uh in terms and my nothing was 
playing with photography equipment and remote control helicopters. And I'm just like, I don't like just doing nothing. I've got to do more than I've got to do more than this. And that's where the seeds of learning and how to help other people at scale and making these things happen uh, began. Because that that's when I, I woke back up, if you will, uh, if, because I, I don't know. There's something about helping someone else achieve their, their first property or helping someone else figure out, you know, their roadblocks to, to that just does it for me, gets me kind of excited. And I'm sensing that you're you're feeling the same way. Absolutely. No, and that's that's really what it's about. And uh, you, you use the term roadblocks, which is really great because and that's what I see in a lot of people there. And these roadblocks are, are really self-set. They're not, in <laughs> most cases, you know, real. And so it's a matter of uh, hel- helping them and showing them how they can get through these with really, um, in most cases, a great deal of ease, much more so than they thought. I, I, why is that? Why is it easier than we think it's going to be? I find that uh, to be an interesting thing is that there are so many things that, you know, I like you mentioned cold calls. <laughs> and I have a whole entire story on that one in and of itself, learning how to make them and all this other stuff. The things we imagine about that cold call or what's going to happen to us are nowhere near what happens. But yet it was the very thing that unlocks the potential uh, that gives us, it puts us on the path to what it is that we were after in the first place. But yet these imaginary things exist in front of us and we let them stop us. No question. And I use the acronym in my book, false evidence appearing real or fear, false evidence appearing real. And, you know, this is really, uh, people manifest in their minds something much, much greater than usually what is out there. It's, it's like being uh, afraid of the dark. You know, you and is it the dark that you're afraid of? No, it's what's lurking there. But what's really lurking there usually? Nothing. And, <laughs> you know, so so really, uh, we allow our minds, and our minds are very, very powerful, and, and our conscious mind in particular, it, you know, it wants to uh, protect us, and, and, and it, our subconscious has the fight or flight, of course, and so it's very powerful as well, and they're, they're working together in some respects on a protection mode, but it's really, if you start to really think it through on a logical level with your conscious mind, you can break that down, and uh, and that's actually what these um, programming messages do as well. They break down fears, they allow you to move through walls, and they allow you to move forward on a step-by-step basis very easily and much more so than people ever thought possible. Indeed. So for those of us looking to get a copy uh, of your book, could you give us some information on how to get either more contact with you or just pick up the book directly? Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that offer as well. The book is available, and and I'm giving it away right now, uh, limited time at this stage, uh, at my website called the7minutemillionaire.com. The word seven, or the word the, and then the numeral seven minute millionaire, all one word, uh, the7minutemillionaire.com or tonynewmeyer.com. And uh, you can just go there, uh, shipping and handling, $5.95. Um, and it's, uh, it's yours for free. Awesome, Tony. Now, one last question. For that person who's listening right now and considering putting on their superhero outfit for the first time, becoming an entrepreneur, thinking that, man, I could probably save some people, what would you have to say to them? Do it. Absolutely. Take action. Uh, you know, take that first step. You, you need to figure out for yourself what is it you want to do, create that plan, set your uh, plan in motion, and take action every single day toward what you want to accomplish. Nice. Thank you very much for investing your time here with the Cashflow Diary audience, sir. Well, thank you, Jay. I really appreciate uh, you know your time and being here with your audience and uh, look forward to working with anybody that uh, wants to connect with me through the website. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It is time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean today? It probably means going over to the website, cashflowdiary.com, get to the show notes so you can click the link straight over to Tony, pick up a copy of his book, pick up two, give one to a friend, because knowledge that shared is better than learning by yourself. I promise you this. It always works better in groups. Anyway, it's been fun talking to you guys again. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.